it's 703 and we will call our meeting to order um, to begin with um, today is august 22nd monday it's a regular board meeting of the kenston board of education and i'll turn it over to mr sayers to introduce our person for pledge of allegiance uh, thank you very much and certainly it's uh, my pleasure to be able to introduce uh, robert phillips is a senior here at kenston high school and he is also the senior class president and he is going to lead us in the pledge of allegiance robert Robert, we appreciate you leading us. At this time, Mr. Pastella, if you can do the roll call for our board meeting. Mr. Berganski? Here. Mrs. Gaskins? Here. Dr. Kraus? Here. Mr. Manning? Here. Mrs. Traub? Here. Welcome to the August 22nd, 2022 regular meeting of the Kenston Local School Boards of Education. Prior to this meeting, each board member received for their review and consideration the agenda and materials associated with each agenda item via the electronic Board of Education agenda system, also called Board Docs. Board members have the opportunity to call the superintendent and treasurer for information concerning agenda items and to request additional information if needed. As a result, voting at the board meeting may appear rushed and without adequate discussion. This is because the board has thoroughly reviewed the agenda items, done the research, and arrives at the meeting ready to vote. The agenda is available for public view via the district website three days prior to each board meeting. This meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business. There are two opportunities for public participation during the meeting, as indicated in agenda items designated as public participation. The first is hearing of the public on agenda items where the board will listen to the comments from the public on any item on tonight's agenda. This is at the beginning of the meeting so that the board can hear from the public prior to any voting. Second opportunity is hearing from the public on non-agenda items, and during this portion of the meeting, the board will hear from the public on any topic relevant to business of the district. Any public comment follows the guidelines included in our board policy. At this time, prior to us moving on to the first agenda item, you all can see that there is somebody new at our table here. It's our new interim superintendent, and I'd like to introduce him. On behalf of the Board of Education, it is with great pleasure and honor at this time that I get to introduce you to our new interim superintendent, Mr. Stephen Sayers. On July 13th, 2022, the board voted to appoint Mr. Sayers as interim superintendent for the school year. He's a veteran educator and administrator. He began his career in education in 1987 as a math teacher, athletic director, and a varsity basketball coach at Keystone High School in LaGrange. He left the classroom in 94 to become an assistant principal at Midview High School, and in 96 became high school principal at Wellington High School. He returned to Midview in 1997 to serve as the high school principal to, until 2001. Mr. Sayers transitioned from building administration to district administration in 2001 when he was named the director of personnel for the Lakewood City Schools. In 2003, he was named superintendent of the Southeast Local Schools in Apple Creek. Mr. Sayers became superintendent of the Amherst Exempted Village Schools in 2008, where he retired and was rehired in 2015. He served in that capacity until the end of July. Mr. Sayers received his master's in school administration from Ashland University. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Education from Kent State University and an Associate of Arts degree from Lorraine Community College. Steve, we welcome Mr. Sayers to our Bomber family. Mr. Sayers also is married to his wife, Maria, who is also a former teacher, and they have three children, two of whom are a social studies teacher and one is a librarian. They also have two um, grandchildren. Mr. Sayers, here you will find tremendous support and love of all things Kenston. No matter how long you will be a bomber, this is your home, and we look forward to your leadership, your experience, and expertise. And in return, we offer the district support, experience, and years of tradition and academic excellence. We welcome you, Mr. Sayers. Thank you very much for that very kind introduction and uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve this uh, outstanding school district. 
and uh, certainly am excited about working with our students, our staff, and our community uh, during the upcoming school year. So thank you again. Thank you. Welcome. We will move, move on to our agenda to the approval of the minutes. We're first going to do the first set, which is A. We'll do a separate a motion for that. So that's the meeting minutes of July 18, 2022. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll motion. Tom, is there a second? I'll second. Dennis, any questions or comments on the minutes? Mr. Pistello, you want to call roll? Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Dr. Krause? Abstain. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. And Mrs. Gaskins? Abstain. <clears throat> We'll go to B now, which is the second set of min minutes, August 3rd and August 8th. We have two sets of minutes for special meetings. Do we have a motion for that? I'll move. Jen, is there a second? I'll second. Beth, is there any questions, comments? You know, I have a comment. It's hard to see you all without being on top of my mic. Um, it, this was probably more appropriate with the um, last motion, but since since our meetings are live streamed, so um, I was out of town for the meeting on the 18th. So traditionally, you know, if you weren't here, you would abstain from the minutes, but we can all watch the replay. I mean, I did watch the replay. So maybe um, in this day and age, maybe we don't need to abstain if we've watched them. I mean, I'm not gonna change my vote, but just something to think about. It's kind of a new day since we can watch meetings that we weren't in attendance for. That's it. Any other comments or questions? You want to call the roll, Mr. Costello? Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Dr. Krauss? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. We will move on to um, five board reports and informational items, and I'm going to turn it over first to Mr. Sayers. Uh, thank you very much. And at this time, I would like to uh, introduce Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, Jeremy McDivitt, who will introduce our new transportation and maintenance staff. Thank you and welcome to all of our new employees here at Kenston. Is this me, Andy? Am I too? <laughs> all right. <laughs> See, I've been on this thing for years. I don't have that problem. Um, we are very pleased in transportation to be able to find two new bus drivers. Um, if, if you watch the news, there's a driver shortage across this entire country. Um, and, and we're not exempt from that. So we are very happy to be able to find two drivers to add to our staff over the summer who will be driving now for this school year. Um, to all of our, our new employees, as your name is introduced, if you don't mind standing, um, for those of you that are here, just so people can, can put eyes on you. But our first driver is Leslie Humple. She joins us as a new bus driver, actually came in having never driven bus before, but went through our training program here at Kenston and is currently um, helping out on different routes, but will be driving her own route soon. Um, and we also hired Charmaine Zerga. Charmaine joins us from Chagrin Falls, where she worked as a bus driver for 23 years. Um, so we welcome Charmaine and are happy to take someone from another district. I hate to say that, but <laughs> we're all fighting for drivers. So, um, In our maintenance department, we had several openings um, over the summer. We were able to fill two of those openings from the outside. Others were filled internally, but we welcome Margaret Bolish, who will be working as a second shift custodian at Timmins and Gardner. They're not here, I hate to say this, because they're working right now, but um, we welcome them. Margaret comes to us from the Berkshire School System where she has worked as a custodian for 15 years, the last nine of which were in the high school at Berkshire. Um, we also hired Jacob Sullivan, who is working at KIS as a second shift custodian. Um, Jacob actually served three years in the United States Army in Fort Stewart, Georgia, where he specialized in nuclear defense. He's worked for us for um, the past two summers um, as part of our summer crew, and we're happy to have him join us full time now. Um, and he started this past August. So we welcome all four of our new employees in the classified staff. Thank you. Next.
next uh, principal, Dave Rogemeyer, will introduce our new Timmins Elementary School staff. So we have a number of new hires at Timmins this year that I'm pleased to introduce. First, I'd like to introduce our new library specialist, Nicole Carroll, who joins our team. Uh, she has come to Kenston from previous positions as a dental hygienist, as well as a sales associate at a local clothing shop. And Nicole has been a stay-at-home mother for the past two years, so we welcome Nicole. <laughs> Joining our front office staff as an administrative assistant is Ashley O'Hare, who was unable to attend this evening, but Ashley uh, will be recommended at, for hire at tonight's meeting as the administrative assistant. Ashley comes to Kenston from Moe's Southwest Grill, where she has been a franchise owner and catering manager for the past seven years. And as I um, watch Ashley in the front office, she jumped right in, uh, is doing a wonderful job. Um, everybody who comes through that door knows Ashley, so she's very well known in uh, the Bainbridge area. So we welcome Ashley to Kenston as well. Joining our kindergarten team as a half-day kindergarten teacher is Ashley Duresky who previously served as a second grade and kindergarten teacher with Cardinal Local Schools. She's participated on various leadership teams throughout her tenure at Cardinal. Ashley graduated from Kent State University with her bachelor's degree in early childhood education and has received her master's degree in reading and literacy from Walden University. So we welcome Ashley. Joining our team as a third grade leave replacement teacher is Mr. Flagger. Edwin Flagger has worked in the Kenston Local School District as the DFA for KIS the past two years. He's received his bachelor's degree from Drexel University. Edwin previously worked at the YMCA as the swim director and coach of the swim team. He has also coached the Kenston swim team and we're pleased to have Edwin continue with Kenston. Unable to attend this evening is our designated for assignment substitute, Peyton Fleming. Peyton graduated from OU with a bachelor's degree in early childhood education and a minor in Spanish. She previously worked as the National Trails, Parks, and Recreation Camp Counselor as well as a volleyball coach. So we will welcome Peyton Fleming to Timmins. Joining our first grade team as a leave replacement teacher is Kristen Owens. Kristen has worked in the district the previous year as our library specialist, and prior to that, she was an elementary teacher in South Carolina, teaching first, second, and third grades. Kristen received her bachelor's degree from the University of Dayton and her master's degree from the University of South Carolina. And Kristen is also a Kenston alum. So we welcome Kristen. And then joining our team as the school guidance counselor is Stephanie Tutkovitz. Stephanie joins Kenston from the elementary school guidance counselor positions at area districts, including West Jaga, Aurora, and Crestwood schools. She has earned her bachelor's degree from the Ohio State University and her master's degree from Cleveland State University. She also has a reading endorsement from Kent State, and we welcome Stephanie to Kenston. Next is our uh, new principal, Julianne Walker, uh, and she will introduce the new Kenston Intermediate School staff. Good evening. I have four employees for Kenston Intermediate School that I would like to introduce you to tonight. The first one is Susan Chikaitis. Susan will be recommended at tonight's board meeting as a proctor for KIS. Susan has been a part of the Kenston family for the past eight years as a bus driver. She now joins KIS as a proctor, and we're glad to have her. Welcome, Susan. <laughs> Second one I have is Stephanie Davis, who was unable to be here tonight. Stephanie graduated from Kenston Schools and previously worked in the district as an academic tutor for Timmins. She received her bachelor's degree in early childhood education from Mountain Union College and also has a master's degree from Kent State University in school psychology. Stephanie earned a reading endorsement for grades K through 12 and a gifted endorsement. We are pleased to welcome Stephanie back to KIS and to Kenston. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we have Sue Tabor, who is the Kenston Intermediate Halftime DFA position. Sue will be recommended for hire at tonight's meeting as the designated for assignment substitute part-time at KIS. She has been part of the Kenston family since 2018 when she worked as one of our district substitutes. She has had several substitutes position, positions here, including a long-term assignment at KIS. We're glad to have her. Welcome, Sue. <laughs> and finally, last but not least, is Anna Timmons, who is taking the other half of our KIS um, DFA position. Anna will be recommended for hire tonight at tonight's meeting as the designated for assignment substitute part-time at KIS. Anna has been part of the Kenston family for several years and has also served on the PTO executive board for the past three years. We are very grateful to have Anna as well. Welcome to, Anna, uh, to Kenston, Anna. Next is Principal Adam Fender. Uh, who will introduce our new Kenston Middle School staff. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Sayers, members of the board. Good evening, everybody. It is my pleasure to introduce staff members that are new to Kenston Middle School, starting with Samantha Friedler. Samantha joins Kenston as a library specialist. She comes to Kenston after graduated from Kent State University in May of 2022 with a bachelor's degree in education and integrated language arts. Samantha was a student teacher last spring at Kenston Middle School, and we are excited to see her back in the building. So welcome, Samantha. <laughs> Next, we have Joseph Brayler. Joe has been a leave replacement at KHS in the math department for the past two years. Prior to that, he worked in James A. Garfield School District as a district substitute teacher for the middle school and high school. Joe served as a long-term substitute at KHS in the social studies department and is an assistant football coach. He graduated from Slippery Rock University with a bachelor's degree in business administration and received his teaching certificate in middle level education with focuses on math and social sciences from Notre Dame College in South Euclid. We are pleased to have Joe continue his career at Kenston. Next, I'd like to welcome Mandy McClendon. Mandy will be recommended for hire at tonight's meeting as one of our academic tutors. Mandy most, most recently worked at Riverside Schools in, at Lamouth Middle School, both as an interventionist, long-term substitute, and Title I reading ELA tutor. Prior to that, she was also a long-term substitute in a number of areas, including in a number of area districts, including Kenston. Mandy received her bachelor's degree in early childhood education from Hiram College and her master's from Ashland University in curriculum and instruction. We are pleased to have Mandy joining Kenston. <laughs> and next up is Andrea Mikolajczyk. Andrea, I've been practicing that. That was pretty good, <laughs> right? <laughs> Andrea comes to Kenston after teaching in private schools where she served in many roles. While teaching at the elementary, middle, and high school levels, Andrea's teaching and conducting experiences include general music education, high school marching band, middle school and high school band, and several levels of choral music. Andrea is a graduate of Bowling Green State University where she received her bachelor's degree in music education and also the University of Akron where she received her master's degree in music education. Welcome, Andrea. <laughs> and not able to join us tonight is Becky Parker. Becky will be returning to Kenston as a designated for assignment sub, but she will be with us at Kenston Middle School. Previously, she served as the DFA at Timmins. So we welcome back Becky. And, and finally, we have uh, high school principal, Tom Gabram, who will introduce our new Kenston High School staff. Thank you, Mr. Sayers. So we have three new hires to the high school this year. Two, or one of them are here. Um, I'll start with Bethany Hassong. She is our new KHS uh, guidance counselor. Bethany comes to Kenston um, really with a wealth of experience in the guidance office. Uh, most recently from Ohio Connections Academy. Prior to that, Madison Local Schools in Mansfield, as well as a number of years at Strongsville High School. Um, Bethany has, has really hit the ground running here at Kenston um, starting in early August. Um, 
and has fulfilled the need, you know, replacing Katie Detweiler and has done a great job. Her specialty is the College Credit Plus area, which she has a ton of experience. So Bethany um, has a bachelor's degree from Butler University as well as a master's degree from Kent State. Welcome, Bethany. A new proctor to our building is, is Thomas Grenier. Thomas joins the high school on um, a daily basis now. Um, he is a familiar face. He has previously served as a um, second shift custodian for a number of years, but you will also see him um, on the football field as a varsity assistant football coach, which is a love and passion. Um, Thomas has done a phenomenal job so far over the first four days, and it's nice to have the extra supervision throughout the hallways and the restrooms, um, delivering passes, and he's really doing a nice job developing relationships with our, our staff and students, so it's great to have him in the building. Thank you, Thomas. And finally, a, another familiar face is Ashley Slaybaugh, who actually signed on for a second year leave replacement in the English department. So Ashley will continue to serve as a English one teacher, and she is also teaching one course um, in theater, and really is doing an exceptional job um, fulfilling this, this need and has a bright future ahead of her. So we thank Ashley for staying on for a second year. Thank you. And on behalf of our Board of Education, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of our new staff uh, to the Kenston <clears throat> Schools. Uh, it's great to have you here, and we certainly hope you have a wonderful and fulfilling school year. So thank you again. At this time, we're going to go to um, board reports and information items, and I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Sayers, to introduce our first board report. Sure, thank you. Uh, our first uh, update this evening is from uh, Dr. Katie Poe, and she is our Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum, and she's going to provide an update on professional development. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Sayers, Board of Education. Um, I'd like to share a brief update on the professional learning activities that took place in preparation for this current school year. An administrative retreat was held at the end of July, where we welcome both Superintendent Steve Sayers and Kenston Intermediate School Principal Julianne Walker to our administrative team. During that retreat day, we, re we reviewed state test data, learned about updates to the ODE platform as a strategy to share test results. The new central reporting system has added some very helpful features that allow for teachers and principals to view building and student level data, historical and predictive trends, items and standards where we did well, and areas teams will target in their upcoming collaborative meetings. The session was facilitated by Northeast Ohio ESC. On that day, the administrative team also continued their learning of the OTES, Ohio Teacher Evaluation System process. The administrators attended two sessions in June on the topic and used the retreat day to review and align our practices for goal setting, conducting observations, conferencing with teachers, and reviewing what constitutes high quality student data, a new requirement in the OTES process this year. Other districts topics covered that day included updates in finances, facilities, transportation, and food service, Dist district updates in the areas of peak and health and wellness initiatives were also provided. Our second professional learning experience for our educators Bomber Flight School was held on August 11th for our newest bombers. This day-long session covered such topics as expectations for academic rigor and strategies to engage our learners, supporting a culture of relationship building and caring for our learners, guidelines for social media and professional practices, descriptions of safety and security protocols, professional licensing and ongoing professional learning. Our third professional development experience was Monday, August 15th, our district convocation, following Mrs. Gaskins and Mr. Sayers' welcoming remarks to the faculty. The remainder of the day was dedicated to educator professional development. 13 presenters and 32 sessions were offered throughout the day to meet a wide variety of needs across the four buildings included in this day. 
vendor presentations, I'm sorry, included in the state vendor presentations for new curriculum materials such as math, grades K through seven, reading and math assessments for high school students, science materials for grades four and five, phonics materials for grades K through three. Two legal updates by Walter Haverfield lawyers, which included general education updates and special education topics. English language arts sessions were facilitated by the ESC of Northeastern Ohio and focused on new and effective ways to teach reading comprehension across the grade levels. And small collaborative work groups with topics developed by principals and teachers to support the development of professional goal setting and use of student data was included in the day. So from a professional development perspective, we had a great strong start to the school year um, by learning and discussing topics and materials that will best support our instruction and student learning this year. Thank you, Dr. Poe. Next on our agenda this evening, uh, it uh, certainly is a pleasure to have with us this evening the president of the Kenston Athletic Boosters, uh, Luke Busby. And actually, I just met Luke out in the cafeteria. So, uh, Luke, thank you again uh, for being here. And uh, we appreciate this update uh, on behalf of the uh, Kenston Athletic Boosters. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity tonight uh, to give you uh, an update on what our organization um, does throughout the year. First, I want to recognize uh, the other board members that aren't here tonight, right? They um, are a big part of what we do. They volunteer all their time, um, and they all have kids and other things to do, but they do give their time very generously to our cause. Um, I am the co-chair, right, um, along with Art Mighton. Uh, Kristen Jacobs is our treasurer. Laren Koenig is our secretary. Kevin Forney handles all the programs for the most part. Michelle Black handles our indoor concessions. We're responsible for the indoor concessions at all the athletic events. Jen McMahon is our event planner, so she runs the Gibbous and Lust Relays and does a big part of uh, the KIT planning along with uh, Tom Manny. Um, Katie Flynn is a new uh, board member and she's our parent rep. Maria Strong is another new board member and she's handling all our memberships this year. And then my wife, Allie Busby, is an unofficial board member, but she does a lot of heavy lifting with all the senior banners and all the uh, yard sign management. So I'd like to thank them uh, very much. All right, um, in normal years, we generate about $40,000, a little bit more than $40,000 that we uh, donate back to uh, various programs. Um, our main uh, revenue generators are programs, and most of that comes from ad revenues from local businesses and, and whoever puts their ad, also some senior bomber ads that are in there as well. Uh, we run big big fundraisers. I just mentioned them, the Gibbous, which is a, a cross-country uh, invitational that runs this coming weekend. Uh, the KIT, which I said, along with the board member Tom Manning, does a, a lot of the heavy lifting on that, and we just uh, provide uh, support. But it is a, a very big fundraiser for us. And then in the spring, we do the less relays with the, with the track program. Memberships um, is another uh, important aspect of our, our fundraising. And then we usually, we used to, pre-COVID, we used to have one fundraising event a year. We haven't done that for the last three years. I'm not sure that we need it with the other fundraisers we have, but it's something that we're evaluating um, as we go forward. Um, and also concession stands in the, um, in the, uh, for the volleyball and all the other indoor sports uh, really help us out a lot. Um, one thing that we've been trying to do since I've been involved, um, which has probably been four years now, uh, or five years, we try to do a lot of reoccurring revenue, or reoccurring expenses to the schools, right? We don't want to do one-offs and things like that. We do that, but we're trying to, you know, for budgeting purposes and things like that, we try to do reoccurring reoccurring expenses. And the, some of those examples are, um, you know, we, we purchase the huddle software that all the sports teams use every year. Uh, we do the programs, we produce, sell ads, we also produce and pay for the programs that get sold at all the various sporting events throughout the years. We started paying for all the senior banners, so the banners that you see hung up on the football stadium or in the basketball arena or in the hallways or wherever, um, we pay for those um, every year. We've been doing that for the last couple of years. Um, and additionally, um, we do fund any state qualifiers that go down to states. We'll pay for the hotel if there's an overnight stay. We'll pay for the meals for the coaches and the participants um, that, are, that are at the state meet. We do, we've done spirit buses in the, in the past. Um, 
yard signs, you know, that we do pay a fee, but we manage all that. And then um, most recently uh, with Reed's help, we have donated $8,000 to um, help with the wrestling floor, floor mats. I think they were, they were getting old and things like that, and a bunch of different organizations went in, but we did don donate $8,000 for that. Um, and then the last thing I'd like to talk about um, is our big program for this year. I'm very excited about this. I've been getting a lot of good feedback uh, on the program. I want to thank Paul and Tom and Reed, uh, especially for helping us get this off the ground. Um, we are doing a pilot program this year where we're funding um, all the student admissions to all the regular season home athletic events. So something that we've been talking about as a group for the last couple years. And we uh, finally got it off the ground this year. It took us you know, a better part of six to eight months to plan it and, and, and make sure we were doing it right. But we are um, paying for all that revenue, all the students that go. Uh, we were worked it out with the school on a, on a payment plan to um, sponsor all that. So our, our intent there is to get more kids to the games, take away excuses for kids not going to the games, make it more effective for a, a family of four. If you're a par two parents and have five kids, right? It's very expensive to go to the game. Now the, the kids can go free and you can spend that extra money at the concession stand, which helps the band and helps the, <laughs> the boosters, right? So we're very excited about it. A lot of good feedback. So we're going to track that admissions. Uh, Reed's able to, Reed did a great job um, at our first meeting this year, setting up the ticket program, made it very easy for the students to use their student ID. They have a one-time purchase and they can get the ticket on their phone or their parents can print it off if they're younger and they can just carry it and it's good for, for all those home contests, except for football. It was a little bit out of our uh, league from a pricing standpoint. But uh, our goal is to get more kids to the game, keep the school whole from a revenue standpoint, and just um, get, get more of that, um, that sportsmanship there. So very happy to do that and uh, very excited to see the outcome. Yep. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Luke, thank you so much for that update, and uh, thank you for all that you're doing uh, to support our students. Very much appreciated. Thank you again. Luke, I would also like to thank you. I'm so excited about that program where the students get the ability to go to those games free. I, I think it's a brilliant idea, and I hope it's successful. And, and thank you for your organization for supporting our athletes, our students, the school system, and all of our programs here at the school. We appreciate it. Thank you kindly. Next, we'll go on to board updates for committees. Is there any committees um, that have met that would like to give an update? Well, we met. Policy committee met, um, but I gave that update the last meeting, and there's policies on the agenda for approval. But, so we haven't met since then. No. Anybody else meet? No, hearing none, we will continue on. Number six is hearing the public on agenda items. I have not received anything. Have you, Paul? I have not. Is there anybody here that wishes <coughs> to speak on agenda items? Katie, did you get anything? No. I just refreshed. Yep. Okay. Move on to number seven, financial items. Hey, Nisa, were we going to have a, a, a moment of dismissal? Oh, thank you kindly, Beth. Um, at this time, before we move on, if there's anybody here that just came for to be recognized or new teachers, now if you want to leave, we will give you a minute to leave if you want to, or if you would like to stay for the full meeting, you're more than welcome to, but you do not have to, but you, you may leave. Bye, everybody. <laughs> thank you for coming, and we appreciate it. Really, you don't want to stay? Thank you for Beth. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to uh, item number seven, finan financial items. We have A through E on this section. Do we have a motion for this? So moved. Beth, is there a second? I'll second. Second. Is there any discussion on any of these agenda items? Just a comment always about donations. So thanks to the folks who decided to choose Kempston yes. for donations. Thank you, Mr. Kenan here is here tonight. Thank you for your support of the school systems as always. And, Ms. and Ms. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stevens, we appreciate it. 
Mr. Pistola, do you want to call roll? Dr. Krause? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. And Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. We'll move on to this time to certify personnel. There are two <coughs> items, A and B, um, substitute curriculum pay and contract. Can I have a motion for that? So I'll moved. Move. Nope. I'll second. Sorry about that. No, it's Jen right. Dembeth? Yep. Yep. Any discussion? Mr. Pistola, do you want to call roll? Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Brigansky? Yes. Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. On to classified personnel. Um, we have three areas, A, B, and C. Can I have a motion for A through C? So moved. Beth, is there a second? Second. I didn't hear the second. Oh, Dennis. Dennis. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on A through C? Would you like to call roll, please? Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Bergansky? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. Supplemental contracts, we just have A. Um, is there a motion to approve supplemental contracts? So moved. Beth, is there a second? I'll second. Tom, any discussion? Mr. Pistola, would you like to call roll? Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Bergansky? Yes. Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. We then go to 12 business operations. We have three things, A through C, under this section. I have a motion for A through C. So moved. Beth, is there a second? I'll second. Jen, any discussion? Mr. Pistola, would you like to call roll? Dr. Krause? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Bergansky? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. <coughs> we go on to teaching and learning. We have A and B. I need a motion to approve A through B on teaching and learning. So moved. Beth, is there a second? Second. Dennis, is there any discussion? Paul, would you like to call roll? Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Bergansky? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. We then skip forward to new business. We have A through E under this section. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Beth, is there a second? I'll second. Tom, any discussion? I have a question about the policies. There's one that's just a biannual review, no changes. What's our, do we have a cadence for like approving, why is that one called out? We have a bazillion policies. Do they, does everything need biannual approval? No, that one's required by law. Okay. That's a statute that requires that. Okay, so there's just certain ones that require special Correct. treatment. Okay. All right. And thanks, I think that was good collaboration on, on the changes for the policies, so that was good work, I think. Yeah, there was some very valuable input that was really appreciated. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, Mr. Pistol, you want to call roll? Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Bergansky? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. <coughs> Next, we go to hearing of public on non agenda items. I have not received anything of you, Mr. Pistol. Uh, bear with me one second. Mm -hmm. No, I have not. Katie? No. Anybody here? Okay, we can move on. Next item on the agenda is a treasurer's report. That's to you, Mr. Costello. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I will be brief. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to point out on my agenda items this evening, um, you noticed a spending plan report for June, um, but you did not see one for July, which you would typically see during the month of August. Uh, if you recall, the Board of Education has not been asked to approve the budget yet, um, and therefore you were not asked to approve the spending plan, and hence you would not be asked to approve a spending plan report. That will all come in the month of September, and so I just wanted to point that out in case you were wondering why you don't see July's on there. And um, that's all I had for you this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sayers, Superintendent's Report. Yes, uh, thank you. I have uh, four items here this evening. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to uh, announce. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize for that. Uh, it's a pleasure to announce that our first uh, week of school went very, very well. Uh, we started with uh, staff, opening staff meeting on Monday with convocation, and then our students, uh, of course, joined us on Wednesday, 
And of course, we wrapped up the week on Friday night uh, with a great game over at uh, Scranton Falls. Uh, great start to the season, huge crowd, uh, just a great, great environment, and uh, just a great first week. Um, our kindergartners, we actually welcomed our uh, kindergarten students today was the, the first day where we had all of our kindergarten students uh, in attendance. Uh, certainly great to welcome the class of 2035. <laughs> it's an exciting thing. Um, I also wanted to mention that open houses uh, are, are uh, happening this week. And the open houses, it's uh, great to be able to announce that they're in person this year, which is a good, good thing. And uh, specific details uh, uh, will be made available by each of the buildings. I also wanted to provide uh, an update on uh, some athletic items, if I could, uh, just share some information that our home athletic event tickets are exclusively online uh, through our platform with hometown ticketing which is located on the district uh, website under tickets. Also, again, wanted to mention, as uh, Mr. Busby mentioned previously, that the uh, Kenston Athletic Booster Club is sponsoring free admission to students uh, for every Bomber home game, with the exception of football. Certainly is a wonderful thing, and information about this is posted on the website uh, regarding the student sports pass. Uh, also wanted to share the tickets for away games uh, can be found on the athletic website under opponent uh, ticket sites. And also a reminder that residents over the age of 60 and children five and under will receive complimentary admission. Uh, senior citizens are encouraged to stop by the board office uh, to register for their goal card. I know we had a couple of uh, folks stop by today, uh, which is a good thing and, and picking up uh, those cards. and. Uh, we are very excited about the upcoming fall season, and one of the things I'm especially excited about is the return. I'm hearing about these Friday night lights tailgates uh, at our home football games, so uh, certainly excited about the return of those and look forward to those uh, this fall. And then I just had one final um, item that I wanted to bring, the attention to the, uh, bring to the attention of our board uh, regarding water testing. I uh, wanted to share that uh, the Kenston Local School District is a public water system that utilizes uh, well water. And the public water systems are required by the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency rules and regulations to monitor water regularly for contaminants. The district contracts with B&J Environmental and EPA licensed water and wastewater operator to conduct these tests. On a daily basis, chlorine is monitored where applicable. On a monthly basis, bacteria samples are taken and tested. Annually, the EPA has an additional monitoring plan in place for each building. Copper and lead are tested on a three-year cycle. These samples were recently taken and have been found to be within the EPA parameters for Kenston Middle School. Gardner, Timmins, KIS, and the high school were not required to test this year. Beginning in 2024, all buildings will be tested annually. Thank you, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Sayers. At this time, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing a personal matter, specifically employment slash reemployment of a public employee. Do I have a motion for that? A motion. Is there a second? <coughs> I'll second. Second. Mr. Stone, you wanna call roll, please? Um, yes, would you um, make notation if you're gonna be taking any action? We are not gonna be taking any action after this, so when we adjourn after, we will come back out in public after the executive session to adjourn, but we will not be taking any further action. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Dr. Kraus? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. And Mrs. Gaskins? Yes. Okay, we are going to go into executive session at this time. Um, we want to go to the